What is up everybody, it is Og here, back with another video, and in today's video, we're actually gonna be running through my best ZG boost method. I was able to get around 140,000 experience per hour just with the standard pool, and once I pulled in some extra gold making, which I'll touch on in the video, we were talking about an, about 120,000 experience per hour for my level 54 rogue. So it's amazing XP per hour. At the same time, if you start doing this for boosting for a lot of people, they are gonna be getting a little bit less experience, which we'll talk about in the video, but you are gonna be able to sell runs for a pretty decent profit. And overall, I'm estimating about 400 to 450 gold per hour from this farm while boosting, which is gonna make it the upper echelon of boosting. You're gonna be able to kill about 62 mobs per every single run with a 15 minute lockout, get a ton of gold, get a ton of bijous. Let's jump into it. If you are interested in seeing this live and things like that, definitely check out the Twitch link down below and hit that subscribe button. Okay, so here we're here with a fresh instance. I'm gonna reset the session. I'm gonna reset the session on my rogue to show the XP per hour that we're able to get. What you wanna do is that you wanna run your alt or the people that you're boosting right over here behind this line of sight on their mounts ready to go. You then hop over to your mage and you're gonna aggro this first group on the left. Make sure you put up ice barrier, dampen magic and mana shield to be able to help with some damage you're gonna be taking while running the safe spot. Aggro this group up on the left. This is gonna open up the pathway to get to the top of the waterfall and that's actually gonna be where the boosties stand. So in the past, in the last video, I actually had them run and swim over to the right with an invisibility pot, but you don't actually need that. And it saves money with the invisibility pot and then also lessens the risk of them running somewhere errantly. But here what we can do is once we have the mage running to the mage's safe spot, and all the mobs aggroed, we can actually bring the rogue over into the middle of the waterfall. At the same time, what you're doing with your mage here is that you're trying to get onto this route and then jump over to the other side and then jump back up onto this route. This route is a reset spot, but what happens is that when you go into this kind of other side, you're technically out of line of sight. And so the last known location for the mobs of you is out of line of sight. So they actually reset quicker and we can see that they reset in a matter of seconds. Sometimes if you don't jump to the other side and you just jump up onto the route, they're actually gonna bug out and not reset very quickly. What we can do then is we can jump over to the other side and we can actually wait for this Berserker to path back. Now, if you reset the instance and you get going quick enough and you run your alts there, you're actually gonna notice that the Berserker is 100% of the time gonna be padding right through here. And so you can get started with the run nearly immediately. So we just gotta find the Berserker now. There is, so we were actually incredibly fast. So we were even faster getting to this spot than normal. But basically, now that we have this Berserker right here, he's gonna be padding back 100% of the time with a fresh instance, and you're gonna be able to get started in your pool very, very quickly. And so now we have our rogue in our safe spot. He sits here the entire time. This is in range of XP. We're gonna be killing on the bridge or killing down at the bottom, even you can kill them there. He's gonna be in range of XP. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be showing the XP that the rogue gets. Right now, obviously we're two minutes into the session, we are rested. So we're gonna be getting that rested XP, so I'm gonna be cutting in half. But shout out to Craig Maurice for showing this particular farm that I'm going to be doing, or actually the route for the first part, and then the second part I was able to incorporate by myself, thinking about the ways we can optimize it. So once this Berserker gets over to the right, we're going to start fishing for slow fall procs on Noggin Fogger. Now Noggin Fogger can actually have a couple different procs that can happen. The first can be a slow fall. The more common ones though are going to be turning you into a skeleton or turning you very small. So here we got very lucky with the slow fall and that allows us to get right into our pool, but typically you're going to get the others. Once we have slow fall though, we jump off this right over onto these mobs. We run around the outside and you actually don't get hit by any of the mobs, grouping them up. And you don't need to worry about swimming through the water to get over to the spot. We then run up the side of the mountain here, making sure that the berserker is past this point right here so we can get up past the candlestick and everything like that. You can kind of use that candlestick as a marker to make sure that he's past that before you start your pool. Wait for the crocs to group up just so that they aren't gonna pull any extra mobs and not be too far from you for the, for the run and then run into here and aggro around the perimeter all these tigers. All these tigers group up, we can see that we have all the mobs, and then we're gonna be jumping off here. So we jump off onto this kind of water, or this uh, peninsula, I guess, over here, making sure that what we could do is we can get onto the next slow fall spot. In the event though that you do aggro, and we can kind of see here that we got aggro of this hooktooth frenzy, you wanna wait a couple seconds to make sure that when you jump off, they're gonna reset. If you don't, I've actually been dazed before by this hooktooth frenzy below there and been dismounted. But we now aggro this group of crocs on the left, hug the right side of this vine, and then hug the inside path right here. Now we're avoiding the crocs, but what you're gonna see here is that I'm strafing up against the wall. By strafing up against the wall, we won't get dismounted. 
and we can get into the water without having to worry about getting dismounted or falling into the water or anything like that. And it's going to be a pretty safe and easy way to go. Now, a lot of people, what they do here is they run over to the side and they aggro this group in the corner, but I actually don't do that. And there's a major reason why I don't, and I'll explain that later. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wait for the crocs to get closer. And then we're going to go over and aggro these mobs right here, hug the left side of this group. We're going to jump and Nova, and then we're going to jump into the water. And as soon as we're in the water, we're going to blink across. Make sure you apply a shield again in case you get hit by one of the hooktooth frenzies or somebody like that and get slowed because that would be unfortunate. Jump turn cone of cold or whatever just to slow those mobs a little bit. And then we're actually going to jump off here and slow fall. So we're slow falling in the water. We can see that we have all these mobs behind us. We're going to blink into these mobs and we're actually going to Nova these mobs right here. Go ahead and reapply shields, pop cold snap, counter spell this mob in the corner, and then we're going to pop a lip right here. So we pop a lip. We're waiting for all these mobs to kind of group up on top of us. We're going to Nova them, and then we're going to start running into our location for the actual pool. I forgot to put mage armor max rank on my bar, or mage armor rank one, sorry. What you actually want to use is you want to use mage armor rank one. Now, there's a very big reason for this. It's going to save you a lot of mana cost on mage armor, so we're going to pop Mage armor rank one. But we can see here that we have about 50% mana. We have all the mobs trailing us right here. They're coming up. We don't actually want to use blink. We just want to kind of mana regen because we have plenty of room on the mobs. And we're going to be working our way over to the bridge. We're only six minutes into the entire run itself. So we have plenty of time. We're way ahead of efficiency. But now we're going to focus on the bridge and talk about a couple things with the bridge. So the very first thing that I do is I jump up here, causing them to kind of path down this way. And I can focus on getting them stacked. There's typically going to be a croc, maybe two, that are kind of ahead of the rest. And so we want to make sure that we're using that jump right there to kind of stack them before we get onto this final pot part. But then you're basically just jumping back and forth, causing them to do this pat and using rank one blizzard to group them up. And once they're grouped, then we could focus on killing them. If you do have a front runner like this, just go ahead and jump back up. It's better if you don't get hit than if you run the risk of getting hit and actually dying. So we're just going to jump back off, waiting for them to get up. Now, how am I always getting this jump? What I'm doing is that I am jumping up into the air and strafing left. So I jump up, strafe left, and it always gets me out of the top. Then when I go back down, what I do is I just fall off and then go back and hug the inside pillar. So I fall off and then strafe to the left to hug the inside rope. Hugging the inside rope, and now we're good to go to jump back up. Another croc came through, we jump up, and we just get them grouped. Once you have them grouped, and I just wasted about 30 seconds there showing how to get them grouped, you can actually start killing them. What you want to focus on doing is you actually want to burn down the cubs as quickly as possible. So these cubs can actually run behind you and cause some issues, aggroing some extra mobs. And so you want to be burning them down as quickly as possible by using max rank blizzard. Outside of that, you're going to be holding max rank blizzard, but you can see here that we're getting some of the cubs down right here. We have six cubs down, so we know that all the cubs are down. So then we're going to blizzard these mobs to get them close to us and then go for the evocate. Now you always want to blizzard the mobs first to get them slowed over here and then evocate reason being we can now hop up and let the full evocate tick without running any risk of getting hit if we were to let them run up away from us before we started doing the evocate what would end up happening very likely is that the mobs would actually catch up to us on the bottom either aggro a fish that could ultimately then kill us or just hit them ourselves but by blizzarding them first to get us to get them closer to us we then have an extra four seconds while they're still pretty close to us on the bridge here where we can actually get ahead and get that evocate off full. But now that we have them grouped up, we're going to go into the max rank blizzard and we're just going to be jumping back and forth. We're able to kill them pretty quickly. You can see here that we're only eight minutes into the run, which is really nice. And while we're using the faster loot method from the video before where I, link, where I showed you how to loot incredibly fast, we're actually able to get through this entire pool in about 10 minutes and this is going to be 49 mobs and so this is going to be really good really good xp but it also opens us up to the possibility of doing an extra pool because we're doing it so fast you have 15 minutes per reset and so with 15 minutes per reset we're actually able to include an additional pool which is going to be able to get us some extra xp for our boosties you can see here that i ran out of mana so i gotta kind of be conservative and i'm going to try to fish for a couple clear casting procs just make sure that i focus on getting down the majority of the mobs and then we'll focus on this extra straggler after that one issue that some people have is if they are female undead, they actually have a tougher time jumping onto this rope. And so for whatever reason, female undead, kind of like gnomes, have the tougher pathing sometimes, just have a tougher time getting up on this rope. Also, if you have this, this shrink from the noggin fogger, where if, you, if the noggin fogger made you into a smaller character model, you can also have issues there. And so if you have that, take off that debuff, because it's only going to cause you issues. But if you are a female undead, the 
couple things that I've been able to find that help some people is to jump diagonally onto the rope or backpedal jump onto the rope. And so backpedal and jump up takes some practice for sure. But once you get it down, you can see that you can just backpedal up on the rope. Now, I personally don't need to use that for troll, but sometimes that helps with some undead females. So try a couple things like that. You could try also putting on vertical sync. Apparently having on vertical sync sometimes helps with the jump. And so if you go into your system and you go into vertical sync and enable this, apparently sometimes that also helps with the jump. But typically you're not gonna have too many troubles with the jump. You're able to go back and forth. Just practice with the rope first before you start doing the pool. And that honestly is gonna be a lot better for you in the long run, just cause you're gonna have it practiced. Quickly loot these mobs with scrolling loot tax. I recommend having it on free for all. But if we swap over to the rogue, we can see that we're currently at 290,000 experience per hour. Obviously this is rested. And so it's about 145,000 experience per hour. But you can see the XP per hour is pretty insane. And from here, we just log out and reset typically. However, because we have this extra amount of time, we're only 10 minutes into the run, we're actually able to include an extra pool to get not only extra experience, but also to get a lot more gold. Now, these crocs are great because they drop a ton of bijus and things like that. And you can see here that, you know, we have, do we have loot appraiser going? Yeah, we have loot appraiser going. So once we get the loot from these mobs, we're going to see that we actually get a ton of gold. Make sure we loot all of them. We'll pass real quick. Holy bijus. This was a crazy drop. And we can see here that we're just getting a ton of bijus flowing in and a ton of gold. From the run, it looks like we got a bounce. Here's another bijou. Oh, I did not mean to pass on that. About 70 gold-ish from this one pool, which is really nice added gold if we were to do four runs of that that's 280 extra gold per hour on top of whatever you're charging for the boost so it's a lot of gold very nice however we got really lucky with the bijus i'm not sure how many bijus we got but we got a ton of bijus but with this extra time that we have we still even have four minutes we can throw in an extra pool into the mix and then the reason for this extra pool is that they actually have a better loot table so the mobs up by jindo actually have this interesting mechanic where they actually damage and ultimately kill themselves this allows you to go ahead and group them up and get them down without having to risk, you know, running out of mana or anything like that or extending it too long because you're actually gonna be able to work through them quickly. We can, however, see this Berserker. And so we are gonna have to wait for this Berserker to pat. This Berserker pats all the way up, all the way down, and then all the way over to the left here. And he stops right about here where these boxes are. So we're gonna wait for him to go to the left and then we're actually gonna try to do the pool pretty quickly because we don't wanna run the risk of him running all the way back before we can do the pool. There's also serpents in this area, so you need to watch out for the serpents. They pat up and then pat in a circle around here and go back. So their patting isn't bad, but it does take about a minute and a half for them to do their little route right here by these mobs over on the right. And so if they are in the top area, you are going to have to wait for them to go back. But hopefully we don't find the serpents when we're going and we're able to get pooling. So no serpents, so we're good to go. They will pat in this general area. Oh, here they are, but they're walking back down, so we're good. And we can run up to the top. Now there's four different packs that we're going to be pulling up on the top and they're all pats kind of doing their normal pathing right here. We might, all right, so we aggro those wither mistresses, so we got to go. We're going to aggro these wither mistresses over to the right. We're going to aggro those back through here. We're going to jump through these guys and jump turn to make sure we don't get dismounted. And you got to be careful because they actually do do a lot of damage. And they also put really unfortunate debuffs on you and curses, which you can't dispel. Now you might be wondering why we don't just like blizzard down these mobs and do something like that. They actually dispel themselves. And so they have a very interesting mechanic where they actually can just dispel themselves and dispel any of the debuffs that you put on. So if you do try to slow them, we what ends up happening is that they will just dispel themselves and you're gonna die. So don't try to do that. But you can see here that we actually group up all the mistresses. We have them all running towards us. We slow fall onto this corner part right there. And then we go right back onto the bridge actually and go right back into our spot. But we can see that they have glowing red hands. So those glowing red hands are actually saying that these mobs are killing themselves. And here's a clear casting we core, by the way. I'll link this down below. It's pretty cool, though. Pops up onto your screen whenever you get clear casting. But now we're going to go back into the killing rotation on these guys. There's two different types of mobs. There's Withered Mistresses and there's Atali Mistresses. I think I said that right. The second type of mob, Atali, yeah, do not kill themselves. And they have 15,000 health. But they do have an amazing loot table. They can drop blood binds and things like that. So they're great to kill if you have plenty of time. But I just kind of focus on the Wither Mistresses unless I have a ton of time left in the run. We can see that we're 14 minutes though, so we're gonna we're gonna want to reset pretty soon here. Make sure you also turn on RP Walk to get back up onto the bridge. But we can see that we're just going back and forth. 
the amount of XP that your alts are going to get or that your boosties are going to get is going to be dependent on the amount of damage that you do to the Withered Mistresses. And so as we said before, the Withered Mistresses are killing themselves, but we're also going to be trying to Blizzard them down as well. And so we're going to see here that we're getting about 600 XP per kill, whereas typically we're getting about 1200 XP per each of the Crocs. But we can see here that we're getting about 600 XP per kill even on these mobs, and we end up killing 12 Withered Mistresses, I think. 13 Withered Mistresses this run. Ooh, and we're about to get 14. So it's it's a little bit of extra bonus experience for the groups that you're boosting themselves. Once you're done with the actual pool, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and Nova these mistresses disappear. You're going to jump back into the water, and you're actually going to go to the reset spot. So there's a nice little reset spot here, if I can get to it, around this tree. You jump up onto the tree root. You can also blink through it if you want. And then you just jump up into this corner. And right here, as long as you're off the ground, you can see here that my feet are elevated off the ground. This is actually a reset spot. These mobs are no longer coming for us, and they'll go ahead and reset, and we can go loot. So we got some extra experience for the rogue. Overall, from this, in the 15 minutes, the rogue got 224,000 ex... I swear, those mobs literally reset. I dropped combat, right? <laughs> Make sure that you don't run too quickly. Because if you run... God bless it. If you run too quickly, what can end up happening is that you can actually still aggro those mobs, as we saw right there and just have a bad day and so now i'm going to try to go and get the loot on my rogue i might still have time if i get back quick enough the mobs are probably going to have about five minutes on the reset so we're going to see if we can get back quick enough i'm going to try to get there on my rogue oh this is this is going to be sketch i already aggroed a hooktooth frenzy okay um Nope. Rogue already died. So that's not going to work. So I'm going to try to get there back on my mage quick enough. But let's talk about some of the XP and everything like that while we're running back. So the Rogue, as you saw, got about 120,000 experience per hour. And that was sitting there with the extra packs. Now, obviously, with just the first pack, if you're just doing that real quick with, you know, quick resets of 10 minutes and everything like that, getting a group and swapping out, you could do four runs per hour, or you could do five runs per every one hour with a 10 minute gap. And so the 10 minute gap is going to be basically the fact that the instance timer for lockout does not start until you leave the instance. And so the very first hour, you'll be able to do 10, no problem. It'll be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then it'll be locked. But the second hour, it won't start until one hour, 10 minutes when the first one comes up. And so then it'll be 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, or two hours. And so you'll be able to do five runs, but with a 10 minute offset, maybe you can use that time to go get some water or something like that. I don't know. But that could get you five runs an hour. If we're getting five runs an hour, you're you're looking at a ton of experience per hour, an absolute ton of experience. We got a total of this session, 56,938. So nearly 30,000 experience gained this session from just those two pools. And so with one person, it's incredible. You're getting about 30,000. If you do five runs an hour with a 10-minute reset, you're looking at somewhere around 140,000 experience. So let's just say for the 10 minutes, 100 and 25,000 experience per hour at level 54. So it's amazing XP per hour. Now, if you include the Wither Mistresses for the extra the revenue that you're going to be able to make, you are going to lose a little bit of XP per hour because you're going to be focusing on 15-minute resets, but you're also not going to get locked, which is actually going to be really nice when you're just going into a rhythm with all your boosties. But there's a big difference that actually goes on with the amount of experience per hour when you start bringing in more people. And so typically when we bring people into a party, they're going to get more experience the more people into the party up to a maximum of four people and so we've tested that a ton with all the other runs and things like that but here it actually becomes a lot different oh they're still up let's go right yes they're still up and so we can actually see some of this better gear coming in so they do have a much better loot table they have the chance of dropping blood vines as well it looks like potentially not all of them were up it looks like they're despawning as we're sitting here but we can see that we get some loot here they also drop rune cloth and this is where i got my transmute and so it's some extra added gold. It has a much better loot table. Highly recommend doing the with their mistresses. But what actually happens with the XP is that when you bring in a second person, a third person, and then a fourth person, the XP rapidly decreases. And so if we start off with an XP rate of about 120,000 experience per hour with one person, with two people, it's going to be about 100,000, and then about 80, 85,000, and then all the way down to about 65 to 80,000 when you have five people. They get more experience as they level up. So when they're 50, they're going to have the least experience. When they're 59, they're going to have the most experience because they'll level the mobs. However, when you bring in all those extra people, you're going to get less experience for them. And so you're going to have to change the amount that you're charging per run. 
What I would recommend as a, as a base figure is 15 gold per person if you have four people. And if you have just one person, maybe charge them a decent amount because this is going to be the fastest power leveling method to go from 50 to 60 if you just have one person that you're boosting. They're also getting a ton of rep. So every single one of these runs is going to give them about 200 to 250 rep, which means that they're going to be able to get about 1,000 rep an hour, which is actually majorly beneficial when you hit level 60 because it's going to give you the added boost of gear right when you get started. They're going to be able to go into a ZG, get the arm splints or whatever, and immediately turn those in for gear. So as far as talents and gear, I am a talent spec that right now that's focusing kind of on being able to do any other boost as well. So I could do SM boost, I could do Mara boost and things like that with this build. And so it's slightly tweaked. If you want just a pure ZG farm build, I'll link that down below in the description. But here we have magic absorption spec. And so we're getting four points into magic absorption, four points into clear casting, just to kind of balance between the two, just so we can make sure that we're getting the benefits of both while also being able to regen mana in other instances. We then jump over into frost. We skip frostbolt, frostbite, and winter's chill and fill out everything else. Now, shatters are actually really nice for this because in the event that you just want to kill them with flame strike on a cold, just pull an extra pack or something like that, you have some extra time. You can actually use shatter and optimize that into your rotation and get in a ton of you know, quicker kills, basically. And if you have the Princess Dagger, obviously you can use that. As far as gear goes, you really don't need a ton of gear. So a lot of people think that you need some of the best gear to be able to do these pools. I do these pools with, you know, about 7,000 mana on this guy. But in reality, you only need about 6,000. When I started on my gnome, I was doing it in pretty much greens and blues. Here I have some epics on this guy just from a little bit of alt rating and things like that. But the majority of them you could just quickly get from running a couple instances or just from buying them off the auction house. There are a couple pieces of note that I highly recommend though. Robe of the Archmage is going to be very nice. I'm not using it here, but that extra little mana back during the run, you can probably pop proc it twice during a kill if the kill is taking a long time. That's an extra, you know, about a thousand mana that you're going to be able to get back. Fire Ruby, another highly recommended thing. Three minute cooldown. So it's basically like an extra mana pot. Gives you one to 500 mana. This is something you just get from the Sunken Temple Mage quest, class quest, and it really helps out with being able to get some extra mana back. Very nice. Highly recommend picking up this as well if you haven't done the ST Mage quest or if you haven't at least picked the other options you could get from there. As far as resetting goes, once we're ready to reset the instance, have your alt in the instance. You don't need two accounts, but if you have two accounts, it's going to be faster. Log out on all the tunes that are inside the instance. Log over to the alt. Wait for lead to transfer, or in this case, if you have two accounts, just have leadership on the alt. Go to the alt, reset all the instances, reset the instances, and then you'll be right back at the start, ready to go back through for another run through. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live and also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm going to go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.